Hey guys, welcome to the channel today. Uh, oh my gosh. So, went ahead and I did go and get the Magic Archer challenge completed. And I'm going to give you guys uh, a little bit of advice that I don't think you're going to find out there anywhere else. Uh, one of my main things that actually helped me win this challenge. And so, it's kind of a rare piece of advice and I think it's... Um, something that is very important and I'll kind of give it to you right now <laughs> the the one thing that I did to win the draft challenge is I never picked the magic archer I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive trying to get the magic archer and never picked it but that was my one key to winning reason being let me just explain that to you we'll hop into a battle here replay because I'm gonna show you a couple of these that are actually pretty sweet towards the end you know that the 10th 11th 12th uh, wins are actually pretty sweet let's put this one on double speed while I kind of talk through my reasoning uh, first off I think the magic archer is not gonna be OP right off the bat which is kind of strange since most of the legendaries that actually come out are a little bit OP and I think they are really strong and this one I think is a little bit different I think it's strayed from the norm and I just don't think it's that strong I really don't I mean you'll hear a lot of people saying yeah it's strong super strong but um, if you go watch um, a couple of tech videos out there some things um, you'll see that he's actually a super high skill tap cap card check this guy out he gets my tower down all the way to 80 anyway um, super high skill cap card meaning it's hard to master him. it's hard to know exactly which one he's doing I'm gonna slow this down a little bit more to regular speed now because this is this battle is crazy because he knocked my tower all the way down to 80 and I'm like well there goes my challenge it's over but I'm gonna keep on keeping on stay positive right anyway so I don't pick him because one a lot of people don't know how to use them, so if they do have them in their hand, chances are they're going to make a mistake in using that new card that they have not seen played a lot, nor have they played against a lot. And I know how to take them out fairly simply, uh, fairly easily, I guess you should say, because check that out right there. The guards took him out without hardly any repercussions. Um, he got one shot off on one of the guards, so one of the shields was a little weak, but that's it. So pretty strong sauce. Anyway, so I think a lot of people don't know how to use the Magic Archer yet, and so I don't know how to use him yet, so why would I pick him? So that was my number one strategy going into this thing. I'm like, Magic Archer comes up, I'm going to give him to somebody else. Of course, there was a couple matches, I think, where I actually did get the Magic Archer, but, you know, I kind of either played him really, really passively, or just didn't play him at all at times, but I, I mean I did use him and he actually did work out pretty well in some situations, but not all the situations. So here check this out, so I get 19 seconds left, <laughs> take his tower out, it's got 10 left on, uh, or it had 10 damage left, took it out with a log, I'm here taking out his golem, he's going to go ahead and have to poison, which is unfortunate for him since there's only 80 uh, health HP left on his tower. That Infernal Dragon is going to do a number on the Golem. He thinks he has a good chance here with his little graveyard. Does not have a good chance. So I get his little tower down. And I'm still defending because I found sometimes I've gone for the offense. I've gone to try and take the kill, take the tower down. And I haven't had enough horsepower. Then I'm left defenseless. So always defend first and then attack when you know you have it defended all the way. And you're ready to take it out. So able to take out Savage Damage. Anyway. We talked through that whole match here. Let's get to battle number, I think this is battle, yeah, this is battle number 11. Let's check this one out. This one was pretty sick. Um, I decide because I think the Royal Giant is just a little bit better in this because you're pretty much guaranteed damage every time you put him down. And so take the Royal Giant right off the bat, of course. Um, I have liked the Dark Goblin in these draft challenges. I do not know why he's not played more because he is absolutely killing it all the time. In these draft challenges, does pretty dang good. So, I did take the Dark Goblin. Had some other stuff given to me. Don't know what it is yet. Anyway, so starting out here, the one thing that I did see on, I think it was Ash's video, um, play defense first. And so that's what I started doing more so. Extremely patient. So he busts out his goblins. I bust out my goblins. He's got an ice wizard. I put out my executioner. And he goes ahead right here and he rockets the beans out of it. 
which is very unfortunate. Let me double the speed up. I really want to open up that chest and that archer real quick. Um, but he arch or sorry, rockets the beans out of it. I'm able to get the Night Witch behind the Royal Giant and do a little bit of a damage. Um, but he gets his counter push coming in here, and I basically like it's toast. I'm surprised that he didn't take the tower out right there. Like I was able to defend pretty dang decently. But he did get the tower down to where it's just like a rocket and a half, a couple rockets away. And so really, he kind of should have switched lanes right there. He did uh, decide to switch right here and gets a pretty dang solid push off. So I'm getting wasted on both fronts over here. So I'm kind of nervous running into about a minute. And then that was a horrible placement with my Night Witch. I found if you do not place something 100% correctly with that magic archer coming across the bridge he'll shoot your tower which is very unfortunate so you need to make sure and put it off to the side but you also have to time it because he locks on your tower so fast like as soon as he steps one half a foot across the bridge he's locked on it's over so able to get my executioner in there there's only 15 seconds left he only has basically a rocket away from winning I throw my miner in the back, able to get the flipping tower locked down. Luckily, because he was only one rocket away from winning. And I just think that was the closest game by far. I was stressed out to the max on that one. I thought it was absolutely crazy. So, <laughs> anyway, let's get into this next one here. Uh, this is the last battle. Kind of intense. So, I found, okay... I play this thing sometimes while I'm at work, I play Clash Royale, sometimes while I'm sitting on my couch, I play, and sometimes I play, but, so the Mega Knight Challenge, I think it was, um, what was the last, the Royal Ghost Challenge, both times that I've won those challenges, I was sitting in the same chair, and that was in my office, I have an office upstairs, and I was sitting in that chair, and so I'm like, dude, I'm gonna go sit on that chair, sure enough, I played this, this is like my, I don't know, I played this challenge a couple times, and when I finally decided I'm going to go play the challenge in that chair, that's when I pulled out the win. So, find yourselves a lucky chair and make it happen. You can do it. I know you can. Find yourselves a lucky chair and you'll go you'll, you'll go far in life. Anyway, so I decide I opt not to play the pump right here because I'm just going to wait and defend all his push before I ever put a pump down. Which um, I think was the, definitely the right move in this situation. He does rock it. Um, try to get my executioner and rocket. He missed it, which may have cost him the game right there. I think if he would have gotten my executioner, it would have been a whole different story because I'm able to get up here, take out some hits on his tower, take out those fire spirits, which would have taken out my E-Wiz quite a bit, and get his tower all the way down to 1494, which is stellar. And I'm also able to put a pump down knowing that he just used the rocket. Now, he is rolling with Sparky. He is. He's rolling with Sparky. But, I'm not too worried about it. The only thing is, I love taking Sparky in these drafts. Because, I think Sparky is super strong, and he knows what he's doing. He does. He gets back there, and usually when you're playing draft, the people have not built a deck, so they don't have Zap, and they don't have E-Wiz in there. So Sparky does a stand-up job. So, I'm having to soak up a fatty hit, but put down the E-Wiz just in time. Which was the fortunate thing for me that I did have the E-Wiz in that deck, that's what saved me this whole entire game because right there, that Sparky would have taken out my Executioner, my Princess, and whatever else. But because I did have the E-Wiz, I was able to take out his Sparky and basically clinch that tower. So it's all the way down. So I'm like, okay, no big deal. I'll just kind of defend. I'll put down another pump. No big deal. Kind of forgot that he had the rocket, so I throw out an oops there. <laughs> Knowing that he's going to go ahead and rocket that tower and my pump, which is very unfortunate. I put my Lava Hound on this side because I'm just going to defend, so I want to just keep pushing the same side. And he puts his Giant down in the back, which is a great move. So I'm kind of stuck. I have to throw my Executioner down. He does have the perfect setup right now, Sparky right behind the Giant. And I don't, there's no way, there's absolutely no way. I missed that Poison, okay? If I would have put that Poison clear up there, I would have gotten the Magic Archer, I would have gotten the Ice Wizard, and I would have gotten Sparky and the Tower. But, no, played it like a noob, totally missed the poison. So now I'm stuck defending like my life de depends on it. That was the worst play ever. Dep <laughs> oh my gosh. So I have to poison again just to take all that magic out. But he does have a rocket, so he's going to go ahead and take that tower when he shouldn't have even gotten to the tower. He shouldn't even have gotten there. So it's very unfortunate. So I'm having to play 
overtime here, which is like not the funnest thing in the world when you're stressed out, sitting in your favorite chair, hoping for the best. But the bomber does take out those fire spirits immediately, which I didn't know it did. But it does. Unfortunately, my princess gets wrapped up in that little tornado. She's always getting in trouble. She's always going off places where she shouldn't be. And so, very unfortunate, but the princess did get wrapped up in that tornado and get rocked. So I'm going to go E-Wiz up on this uh, giant kind of slow him down. I don't want him chomping away at my tower. <laughs> Who wants that? So, I'm going to go ahead and take that giant out, just because that's what I do right now. Um, E-Wiz with the Executioner. Clutch plays right there. I think E-Wiz is going to come in. What is he? I think he, yep, he drops Sparky right there, which was kind of a bad play on his part. But the E-Wiz does end up dying, so that kind of benefited him. The tower was focused on him. Now I'm within a little bit dang close, so I have to drop my Mega Knight up on those uh, barbs, which is a great play. Great play. But like, look, look, look how the Magic Archer is still rocking the tower's world. Luckily, the Mega Knight had a sliver of health. Able to jump down on Sparky's throat. I get the E-Wiz in there. At this point, it is 100% over. Call the game. That's it. That's my 12th win. Super jacked up, super excited, could not be happier, except I don't think I'm going to use the Magic Archer. Probably ever. <laughs> maybe maybe if they change something, but I mean, literally if you're going to use it on ladder, you have to get it to level 3, at least at, at this level. And if you're going to use it in challenges, you got to know how to use it. So it's going to take some practice, so it's going to be a while before I use it, but I will try and make a deck with him and see how <clears throat> how it goes. Let's go open him up. Let's unlock him since we got him. Um, collect that bad boy. <laughs> That's awesome. So excited. Magic Archer unlocked. Yeah, buddy. What's he doing with his eyes? Is he breathing? Is that coming out of his eyes? Oh, that was weird. Anyway, that's trippy. Anyway, so let's go ahead. Let's open up that chest. Now's the time. Let's do it. Oh, we got some gold. Uh, you did get 10,000 gold in this challenge for winning two, plus the 11,000. So it actually... Turns out to be a pretty sweet chest, besides the fact that it's not a regular Grand Challenge chest. But you do get a lot of gold, you get a, some good stuff, so... It doesn't look like I'm going to get another uh, Legendary in this chest, but hopefully we'll get something sweet. Some clone spells. Kind of a useless chest, in my opinion. Uh, let's see, what do I like in there? I like the Goblin Gang and the Musketeers, I guess, so I'll take that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for dropping by the channel today. Um, if you guys like what you saw... Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave some comments down below. Let me know if you guys did get the Archer or not as well. I would like to know. Take it easy and good luck.